the situation that's going on now with more and more we seem to have issues where county boards want to hold things in camera in secret. We saw with Clare, one of our county boards meetings uh, recently, the latter end of it, that was held in camera. You see the situation with Mayo, they put out, you know, this motion of conf you know, that I think their last meeting was held uh, in camera as well. Where are we going with this? Um, this hasn't been particularly uncommon in the GA over the years. It's just, I think, because uh, the Mayo story is such a big one and it's been rumbling on for weeks that this is the latest twist in the story that uh, the Mayo uh, Executive County Board had a meeting that the, that the media were barred from on Monday night. So um, I think Mayo have been one of these counties that have been very media friendly over the years. Um, they have a very strong critical local media, which isn't true of all counties. Um, there's certain counties you'll find that, particularly where there's like a proliferance of media outlets, the like of Donegal with a very strong local media as well, that are questioning things going on there. And um, Donegal journalists kicked up a bit of a stink a couple of years ago as well, whenever a few meetings in their county were, were closed off to the media as well. So um, I think it's more the fact that the local media in Mayo are strong and they're kicking up a fuss about it, as a right to um, at the end of the day, club delegates are representing clubs and club members have a right to know what is going on in these meetings. I suppose the counter argument to that is always uh, county boards, GA officials at central level as well will throw out things like things being commercially sensitive information if it's got anything to do with financial dealings and things. But I mean, th there's a lot of questions to be answered around this. It just seems that Mayo just seem to be uh, prevaricating uh, to a pretty incredible degree here and just seem to be putting meeting after meeting off and I don't know when they're going to answer these questions they vowed last week um, that, that they would answer these questions at this meeting and the next thing no media and you could say they face the clubs or whatever like but I, I don't I don't really think that washes with a lot of people so I don't think it's a healthy development in general for the GA that that uh, media are being kept out of meetings like uh, people people need to know what what is going on in these meetings. Doesn't it feel in some ways that the county boards are struggling to keep, and not necessarily Mayo, but you know, in a general sense, they're struggling to keep their houses in order. Like even Galway coming out with a, uh, a statement coming out from Supermax, uh, their sponsor, that county boards are struggling to get their house in order. And in that situation, they're like, we need to figure this out and we better get the media out of the way because otherwise, perhaps incompetence is going to be showing up here. Yeah, and I mean, this goes back to like a, a much bigger point. That, I mean, you could actually spend all day talking about it, and just in terms of uh, the sheer amount of fundraising that is going on in places like Mayo to try and uh, fund inter county teams. Like, I mean, Mayo, you mentioned Galway there, and like they're spending over a million euro a year in their county teams, and the mon this money has to come from somewhere, and it's becoming fairly obvious that uh, amateur officials are struggling to cope with this workload. They may not have the expertise, they may not have the time. And probably a lot of this maybe goes back to six or seven years ago when the GA decided to make county secretaries full time. Um, at that stage, a lot of their titles changed to CEOs and things like that, but it was a lot of them were just the same fellas, mostly fellas, county secretaries. Um, there didn't really seem to be a cognizance of uh, the way the GA was going, that it was becoming like huge like a huge financial monster, like some county boards now are they're turning over I think five million a year, I might be right in saying. Like crazy amounts of crazy amounts of money. Like these are uh, I mean you might have a small company turning over a million euros a year that could have seven, eight full time staff doing this and like you're talking maybe one full time staff member to administrate all this. It's not it's not sustainable and it's it's a bit surprising that the Croke Park haven't seen this coming down the line because it has been coming for a while. Like Intercounty spending across the board is hitting around 25 million for the year for all intercounty teams, which is crazy. 2016 alone, Mayo spent very generously broke down the figures for us, which most county boards don't. 994,000 euros on their senior football team. Now they won in All Ireland under 21 that year. Um, they had a lot of success in in hurling, and they uh, they they obviously were in All Ireland final replay against Dublin as well. But that spend was monstrous. 994,000 euros. So just administrating this. Um, this was always going to come to a crunch at some point, and it's just uh, Tim O'Leary and Mayo has started asking the questions. He's money there, he has backers ready to pump money into Mayo, and he's not going to pump it in unless he sees what he terms proper governance there. So it's just it's the amateur world crashing into professional world, and this is this is what we've ended up with. So I think I really think the GA need to start looking at getting proper financial 
people now, obviously, accounts every year are audited, but it's what's happening between January and maybe uh, August, September, October before auditors get in there. Like there, there, there needs to be full-time people there who are experts in business and finance and county boards. Like it, it's gone long past that, and if the GA has to finance that, then then so be it. Like take take the burden off the amateurs, let the county secretaries get back to doing what they did before, sorting out fixtures, dealing with whatever else they dealt with. So I, I think we're going to keep seeing scenarios like this until somebody at central level steps in here. Because it seems like there's a growing demand for transparency, and I've mentioned Supermax coming out with their statement. Um, like the media weren't pretend, uh, permitted to attend that Mayo meeting the other night. You know, to, it was going to be discussing the, the ongoing dispute between the Mayo International Supporters Foundation and the county board. And then it was uh, like, apparently the Mayo GA said that there was a, a motion, a vote, a vote of confidence that was resoundingly passed by all the delegates there. As, as I said, this was in camera. And then a load of Mayo clubs came out and they refuted this claim. So that demands for transparency are only going to grow. Like these county boards are going to come under more pressure. I know it was, in my view, it was very healthy to see clubs coming out and challenging what the county board said. There, there needs to be a lot more of that going on all over the country. Um, there's a lot of counties where some of the, uh, I don't know, maybe shrewder, smarter county boards have basically all but silenced clubs, and they don't ask any questions anymore, particularly where uh, inter-county sides are successful. I find that clubs are less likely to ask questions. You might find media are less likely to be admitted to meetings. So um, I, I think the Mayo thing has come to head, though, pretty simply because like, if, if you're a big financial backer and you're a businessman, like uh, Tim O'Leary is, um, whether he's raising money or putting his own money into Mayo GA, he wants to know he feels when he's doing that he has a right to know what's happening, not only to his money, which he said, but just the money in general, how Mayo are spending it and what they're doing with it. So ultimately, the bigger one of the bigger points here is that Mayo have been trying to chase down Dublin. Um, that's what everybody's trying to do. Dublin are the elephant in the room, along with the provincial system. They're the two biggest elephants in the room in the GA that nobody really wants to talk about or you know discuss consequences be the in, intended or unintended of, of, of where we've arrived at in terms of the competitiveness of the Ireland Football Championship. So Mayo are chasing, Mayo are chasing down Dublin. They're spending as much money on county teams as Dublin every year. The difference is they could shell out €500,000 in mileage. So they're not probably pumping the same amount of money into their teams for that reason. But they're still trying to chase Dublin down. That's what their fans expect. 12, 13,000 turning up to league games in Castle Bar. This, this is what they expect Mayo to do. And they've done a fairly good job of it over the years. Like they're the one team that, to my mind, looking in the games, have been able to compete with Dublin um, athletically, physically. Their players aren't as, probably quite as big as Dublin, certainly in the backs they aren't. But they've, I mean, they've probably made the most of what they had there athletically. So. I mean, there's a lot of different pressures coming on the Mayo County Board. Like, it's probably unfair to completely hammer them and all this because they're expected to put in place, you know, like James Horn is there and he brought a big professionalism to Mayo on his first stand. And they're, they're expected to put that in place, um, the structures to provide a team that are challenged for an Ireland, which brings huge pressure. Like these big fundraisers in America, I think, what did they raise? Maybe four or 500,000 in America, you know. Like, huge pressure comes with that on a lot of volunteers, which is another facet of this whole argument and debate that probably needs to be considered as well. Volunteers that could be doing something else with their time in their clubs perhaps. But yeah. Thanks very much Carl. All right. Move on.